Well, let's yeah, let's get started. Um, just want to let you guys know uh, we will do a Q and A at the end. But by all means, any questions you have, pop them into the uh, chat window, and I will answer them as best I can. I will uh, always try to send an email out to a question I can't answer. Usually, though, I can. Anyway. And so today, again, we're talking about Starlight Plus RHD over coax uh, products. Come on, mouse, do your thing. There you go. And uh, we're going to have uh, some upcoming webinars on a few other subjects, too. But we're going to talk about HD over coax product. Uh, uh, this particular camera, which is the 2 megapixel uh, universal HD camera, with, uh, this one's got the verifocal lens. But the reason why I touched on this one is, you know, analog world, we're going from, you know, usually doing a retrofit. So the cable's still there. And you know we're pulling these cameras in, and they're 960 if you're lucky. A lot of them are 720 by 480, and then of course you get down to the cameras that were measured in line, so two, three, four hundred line cameras. Not that there's anything wrong with the cameras; just the technology has really gone on. And we're putting this in, re retrofitting this in to a site, and some people want some dramatic improvements. A lot of problems with the older cameras was how to deal with them with low light, and we're going to discuss a little bit about all the different things, in, you know the the menu uh, in the camera, but talk specifically about the starlight setting because it applies to any of our other cameras, whether it's a five megapixel camera or some of the other things we have coming out. So first off, uh, you know, what's in the box, how the camera's configured. Um, one of the things here, I'm just gonna pause it on here, is the camera ships with this clean view hydrophobic dome coating. So we got this little piece of plastic here. So when you're handling the dome, you're taking the screws out or whatever. Use that piece of plastic. Don't get your fingerprints on the camera because your oils will interact with the coating that's on the dome. All right. And then the last thing you do when you're all done, you've aimed the camera, you got it all focused, you put the dome on, tighten up, and then peel off that uh, plastic. Uh, and what that does is if rain hits it, dust in the air, whatever, it won't stick to the dome. And if you're using IRs, of course, at night, the IRs hit the dust and then reflect back in the lens, making your, your video quality uh, less. Also, even during the day in color and stuff like that, it's dust gets on the lens, it does obscure, doesn't allow light to go all the way back into the camera. So good idea to handle the dome part uh, with care. All right. Uh, this is sort of a, uh, an exploded diagram uh, of the camera. We've got the light sensor over here. Uh, we've got a, we have a, comes with a test video cable, so you can plug your monitor in there, be on the ladder, plug your monitor in there. But also you see it's got an RS-45, it's got these bare wires, bare ends on here. Uh, alarm output, and then our UDP, which is, of course, our uh, twisted pair connection on it. So you can actually go over here, throw a switch on it, and the camera has a video Balin built into it. So you can then pipe that video back to a recorder, use just one video Balin on one end, and get that video back. So you can run, you know, Cat5, Cat6 to a uh, couple of cameras there, uh, and away you go. So you can use twisted pair this way also. Later on, customers putting in this high-end analog, they want to go to IP at some time in the future, you can do it. Or they have old phone line, you can use Cat3 cable. Uh, you can't go quite as far, you know, Cat3 cable. So uh, again, just a really nice uh, thing to have the Cat5. That's not in all the cameras, some of it's by physical size and cost, uh, but this one, this camera happens to have it, that's why I chose it. So when you log into the camera, so we're at the A1 Plus recorder here. So when you log into the camera, you can use this menu button or preset 95. Preset 95 will pop up and you'll be able to go into this, the PTZ menu and manipulate the menu, turn on and off wide dynamic range, uh, your different functions here, your defog, which is you know, funny because it really doesn't have a defogger built in. It's not gonna sit there and have some hot air blow on it to try to get rid of the fog in the camera. Uh, the camera shouldn't have any fog in it, but what it's doing is it's doing a, um, digital manipulation, looking at the contrast of the camera, things like that. And then uh, it tries to make an adjustment to make the scene uh, uh, clear. Okay, so it's doing it all electronically. And then of course we have our gain, so that's the amount of light the system is uh, compensating for. And then our starlight mode, of course we're in black and white, so starlight and AGC gain we don't see work very well. Okay, and we can go back and forth uh, you know, to these different functions. And then we can go in and look at how the system works. We have uh, uh, on the, you know, color mode. So we go to color mode and just stay at color mode without adjusting our starlight mode or our gain or anything. It's pretty dark. 
okay? You know, and of course, when we have the IRs turned on, the IRs can uh, pop up and you see we've got our color gain. We can add a little more color to the scene or we can increase our AGC, which will increase the amount of the sensitivity of the sensor to light, all right? And this happens to be our uh, turning off the wide dynamic range, wide dynamic range and, uh, you know, starlight don't mix. So you leave the WDR off when if you're using the starlight. HME uh, is an interesting one, really designed for really bright lights. You're trying to get a view of inside a car uh, and license plates if you're in the black and white mode. And what that will do is it'll electronically block the brightest light, all right, and then boost up the darker area a little bit, allowing you to read, uh, uh, you know, read plates, read numbers, read stuff like that on the side there. So, you know, you can go through this. Now, what I did was I wanted to give you an idea of kind of how dark it was outside my house. And I'm not really trying to do a comparison between an iPhone 11 picture and then literally this piece of video here. What I want to do is do a comparison, try to give you an idea how dark it was. There was still a little light here, even though it was nine o'clock at night. I took them at the same time this was nine o'clock at night. But you can see what the starlight is doing versus how dark it was. Okay, so the starlight is bringing up the light. If there was someone sitting in the seat, it would have been easier to see them. Of course, the lens is a wider angle, so I'm seeing into this. So even though this is a two megapixel camera, comparing it to this for the situation of what we want to do, and the surveillance mode, we could get someone walking by, we could see what they look like, see the color of their clothes. And that's the whole whole idea behind this. But it really does bring up, you know, if you have any sort of ambient light, it brings it up and makes the video usable in color. Okay. So one of the other things I want to show you was um, go into our warehouse uh, in California. Okay. And what I did was I turned the starlight off, left the gain on, um, you know, a, you know, AGC seven, which is the amount of light it's trying to compensate for. And as you can see, you can't see very much in this scene. It's black. Uh, this little dark gray to this black gray is actually, unfortunately, go to meeting, making changes to the, the screenshot. All right. And then when we go and turn on AGC two, you can see you can start seeing a little bit of the scene. And what it's doing is taking the light. There's very little light, almost all of it coming from here which is either a small window or a, a light in the hallway over there, you know, and that's literally 60, 70 feet away. <clears throat> and it's doubling the amount of light getting to the imager, okay, with stock gain uh, on it. And then we're gonna quadruple it. Now we can see we got the pallets, we got boxes, still a little bit of noise, uh, you know, more than I would like in, in the scene. And by the way, I'm doing this all with the um, controller over here, so I'm actually logged in with the PTZ controller. I use preset 95, and I can bring up the control of the camera. So you don't have to be on site to make the adjustment. Customer says, ah, I'm really not seeing as much as I would like, okay? You know, and so then we're gonna go to times eight. So times eight now gives you usable imagery, okay? So we're eight times the amount of light usable imagery. You can see we got boxes wrapped in plastic, some pallets on the pallet rack. You know, and maybe we're just covering for, you know, people coming in here. Uh, and then we uh, increase the starlight to 16. So 16 is about the highest I would go. Uh, but I've actually was looking at this and made some tweaks because I noticed there was a little noise being generated in. And I felt it was from the gain. There was a little too much gain now at starlight 16. So what I did was I cranked the gain down a little bit and made the starlight at 16, so I've got a usable picture, you know, still a little bit of noise in there, but but we've got a usable picture of someone walked in there and I was fooling around in the warehouse, they had a little flashlight going or whatever. We could still see what's going on. Our motion detection would function uh, properly, you know, uh, all you know, all those different items. And then, you know, finally, cranked it up all the way 32X. And as you can see, you could probably mess around with this and make this better because now you've got this view back here. But I like the way the 16 one and you can see where our center is. So this is our area of interest. All right. So you can crank it up all the way to 32, uh, which is 32 times you know, light coming in 32 times more and maybe play around with AGC or your DRC to get a better picture. But certainly, you know, no starlight, no whatever. We get nothing. Now we could turn it to black and white mode. Uh, and do it, but then maybe 
we want to do some more covert um, view, so we don't want the red glow of the IRs being seen. Okay, so it's a little more covert doing it this way. So you can go from that, you know, to that. So give you an idea, just give you an idea of sort of how Starlight works, how these settings work, how the, all the settings interact with each other. Okay, so I can change DRC, and DRC will actually raise the uh, light in the dark areas and darken the light areas a little bit. So I can actually mess with all these settings, backlight compensation, although I would only use BIC and not WDR. Uh, DRC, defog again co tries to compensate if it's a little, uh, uh, I, I, I would say the equivalent of foggy or contrasty. Uh, AGC, you can adjust the gain again. Having max gain is not always good because sometimes you get a lot of noise. And then the 3D DNR tries to compensate for that by taking out the noise. What 3D DNR does is it analyzes each pixel and let's say there's not supposed to be these white dots there. See, it's, you know, there's a, a quite a bit of noise in this 32X scene. And what it does, it tries to replace it with what it thinks it's supposed to be in there. Okay, and that's how 3D DNR works, it's analyzing it. I don't know how many thousands of times a second trying to compensate for, uh, you know, noise from your imager, which is, this is the case on any camera. You can take out your iPhone and turn off the flash and it's a little bit dark and you'll see noise uh, in the imager, even though, you know, you're paying a thousand dollars for the phone and you're buying it to take good pictures of your kids. You know, you're still going to get noise. That's why, you know, there's lighting and stuff like that. Or you can take, uh, there's something. Now, surveillance cameras, of course, were designed to try to see what people are doing, what's going on. And sometimes just having a good, you know, two megapixel, you can go to five, two megapixel camera again. I mean, you take this uh, shot at the beginning here, we'll just roll backwards. Sorry, guys. I think it's flashing a little too much. One more. One more. One more. There we go. You know, take this shot here. That is good enough. And by the way, that's that's five seconds of video. That is not a still. So you see my little, you'll see my little mouse wiggle around at the beginning. That's I didn't even take a still shot from. It. I'm just using five seconds of video. That's a still from an iPhone. You can see someone walked by. I could see what clothes they're wearing. I could see you know what they're doing. Better than this one. It'd be a little too dark now. By the flash on, of course, there'd be a flash. I could probably see him better on the iPhone, but. Surveillance is different than taking a picture of some scene you like. So anyway, we'll now jump forward. I'll actually we'll get out of here so we don't make the screen flash for you guys too much. You know, guys don't mind that. And we'll go to this one. All right. So some of the other settings are your sharpness, okay, which is which it increases your edge look of the uh of the video and then your gamma now your gamma is a little counterintuitive when you go to it we'll just wait for that my little video to drop down there so when you go to gamma gamma is not the amount of light it's trying to gain it's the amount of light in the scene so if we go in and i lower the number it increases the amount of light in the scene all right and if i increase it it increases the amount of black in the screen now we also can mirror the camera flip it someone put a camera upside down you can flip it you can make it you know sideways 180 degree view uh 90 degree view in there for depending on the situation you have so you know by all means keep that you know in mind you can actually take a camera which is 16 by 9 access the aspect ratio flip it on its side and just get the proper view of the camera in your recording software. All right, so you can have someone walking down a hallway or an alleyway, and you don't want what looks like five feet of brick wall on each side, you want to use the aspect ratio of the camera. So keep that in mind, you can do that using that function in the camera. Now also, we have our different settings here. Matter of fact, I will jump back to this one for one second. So these things, communication, you don't have to touch. That's how it talks to the recorder because we're not plugging it into some different oddball recorder there. So literally, I have yet to do that. Camera title, you can 
turn camera title on and name the camera and have the name of the camera burned in in the video at the camera. You're going to come across sometimes where they want date, time, and camera names coming from the camera. So this way they're, you know, they, they, they feel there's no way for evidence purposes that it was manipulated, you know, either on the server side or post. Okay, so sometimes those are the requirements. Uh, frequency you can leave at 60 hertz unless we're over in Europe. Uh, image range, again, you always leave it on full. Uh, initialization just resets it back to factory default. So again, so there's some settings in there that are interesting. The camera title I think is the most important one because you just never know when people are going to request stuff like that. We have privacy zones and motion detection uh, on the cameras. Uh, we have ability to do uh, external IR, but if we go back over here and hit pause again. We also have smart IR. So if you are using the IRs and not the starlight of the camera, uh, that will actually, if someone or something is getting too close to the camera, it'll then bring the power of the, the IRs down a little bit to make that thing identifiable. The higher the number, the more the smart IR is active. Uh, you know, my sense, I believe, uh, two is sort of factory default. I always crank it up to about the middle five. And then, you know, I've walked up to it with my big face and uh, seems seem to work very well and react very quickly. And go, it, it, the five powers it down a lot, okay, if something gets too close. I, I think two doesn't power it down enough, personal. So, and again, if you have a camera that's, uh, you know, uh, verifocal, this will control the verifocal end of it. If it has an adjustable iris and focus, because of course it has a verifocal, it'll have this. You can go in and also manipulate those. Again, I would say to you, run that stuff at auto unless it's like a specific situation uh zooming in and adjusting focus and iris would be like if you're looking top down the lighting's always the same uh at a casino because then you're going to want to get the max you know max detail and you don't care what's going on on either side of the table you're looking right at the table where the action is and also some uh, manufacturing facilities and stuff like that so uh, sort of a little tech tip in here, but in uh, Spectrum, I'm sorry, not in Spectrum, in your uh, IP uh, A1 Plus, we have this little snapshot feature. So let's say, again, you've done a retrofit. So you use some of their old cable, stuff like that. Customer says, you know, something weird going on with the cameras. They're not always running. So you can go out and do some troubleshooting, obviously, or log in and do some troubleshooting. But you can also have the status of those cameras sent to you once every half hour, once an hour, once every six hours, once every 12 hours, once every 24 hours, you know, and you can use the snapshot to also help you when you do done with your install, initial installation to see how the camera looks. And maybe you got to log in remotely and say, you know, camera number 12, I need to crank up the starlight or I need to change the smart IR because it's just not looking good. And you can get an idea of how, what each camera looks like. Or there might only be one or two critical cameras. You choose those and have it sent in an email at intervals versus you trying to, you know, sit down to your computer, log in, look at it, and leave, sit down, log in at midnight. You can go in and collect it all during the day and then, you know, make a tweak or two uh, you know, uh, at a later date, next day, something like that. So it's a very good diagnostic tool. Uh, I use it at the Tampa office because we have a side gate at our building and want to make sure the gate's closed every night. So I have that thing send me every six hours. I get one email it shows me two cameras basically both showing the gate you know and and then i'm just happy to see here the gate's closed every night because i'm not always there you know I'm travel well i was traveling stuff like that so so just keep that in mind really great i, I you can I, i've used it as a diagnostic tool for cameras before then of course you can log into any of our cameras in the web browser okay and view them in the web browser and run the same setup I was showing you from the web browser. So from the unit, from the web browser, and as you also saw from the C3 software, I can do all the same setup and adjustments. So this one I'm doing HME, you know, highlight masking, turn on the WDR, you can do all the adjustments there. Now, of course, I, you know, I prefer to tweak the cameras for night because most of the mischief goes on in the evening. So if they're like a little too bright during the day or whatever, I'm, I'm not as concerned about that as people wandering around the neighborhood, you know, or in a building or around a building or whatever at night. So 
I just try to keep that, you know, in my mind. I'm trying to tweak this for, um, you know, uh, shenanigans that go on at night. So let's talk about setup of a different camera because we have a bunch of different cameras and we have the uh, our three imager, uh, six megapixel AHD camera, bullet camera style, but three 2.1 uh, megapixel cameras in it. And uh, it's gonna wait for me to pop pop open the box. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, I kind of highlight it. So you guys know most of our products are made in Korea. Some are made in Vietnam, and we've got one or two items made in Taiwan. And 99.9% uh, uh, .9 of our products actually meet the NDAA and TAA list. And you can go actually go on our website and see it. So this one's got the three, uh, three images in it. And by the way, I forgot one item on here. There's an IR that replaces this an IR emitter that places this top piece. Uh, you can special order it, and it'll give you a 50-foot IR on that hood, so you can have IR with this one. So just so you know, it's just not a straight starlight uh, camera. You can add IR to it. Now we also have IR emitters uh, in our uh, Sight Watch, Night Watch line, also, and those were those are actually PoE powered. You can run a PoE injector on them. So there we got our camera. And again, a little uh, blow up. So this camera, this camera happens to have one, two, three, four B and C. Okay, three are the imager. The fourth one I'll show you. And um, again, you're looking at that saying, oh, I got to run three, you know, uh, three, you know, RG6 or RG59 cables. It's a lot to run. You can run this thing off one. Uh, cable for power, all right, and then a Cat5 cable and use uh, video bay on it. So you can run this off, you know, running one wire or running one wire and another pair for power. So, and, you know, you've got the different screws here. It comes with the tools. You can loosen those and move this thing around. And there actually is a cap on here that has a setup and also has the output for the, um, uh, what do you call it there, your test monitor. So six megapixel resolution, all stitched together, giving you a little over 180 degree view, uh, wide dynamic range. It is our starlight technology uh, built into it. And this is what it would look like on a recorder. Got your four cameras. And you're saying, well, why is there four? You kept saying there's three because there's this camera here. This is a stitched view of all three cameras. And then you have a zoomed in on the center one if you just leave it alone. There are some other features uh, to this we're going to show you and show you how to how to set them up. That's very easy. So again, kind of neat. You got one camera taking up four spots, but this four one, uh, we've had customers use the three on a regular group of recorders at the regular cameras, and they had uh, I think it was four of these, and they had a four channel recorder just recording and managing these four views because they really like the view that came out of these. So we're going to go into PTZ on this side and we're going to go in, program, program the camera and then um, you can see we're going to bring up, we got the backlight compensation, the DRC, the defog, AGC and starlight. So this one has a very similar to the other single imager unit we saw. But we're setting up one imager at a time in this one. So we're managing this is the far, I don't know, left or right, depending on which way you're looking at the camera imager. You see I've got BLC, and then I turn on wide dynamic range, and then you look, notice the clouds. Because of the way the wide dynamic range works, you can now see that there's clouds up there. Now, admittedly, I don't have a surveillance camera to go look at clouds. It just happened to be in the view. I always take the cameras and try to get as little of the horizon as possible in there, so point them down so they're not looking at the sky because during the day there might be too much light, okay, uh, and or not enough, you know, or some, the sun setting actually point directly into the lens of the camera, so just keep that in mind. I'm, I'm anti, see these, log into some sites and see these cameras looking at the horizon, they're like trying to catch planes landing or something. Anyway, we'll keep going. So this one here we're gonna go open. So you can tweak each imager on this camera. So let's say on this side, you know, we're under a tree, it's a little too dark, whatever, maybe we're gonna turn the starlight up a little higher on this one or the AGC up a little higher on this one than 
the other ones because it's under a tree, it's darker. You know, maybe I someone doesn't turn on these lights over here. Who knows? So, and then of course we can change the white balance, the color gain. So color gain gives you the amount of colors like saturation. So you can see everything's getting greener and redder and you know bluer. Everything's looking a little almost too too good. You know, you want to make the thing as close to true color as possible. There's also, you know what, I'm going to go up here and see if you guys can see it. There's also this submenu here. It's hard to see. Submenu here. Which actually allows you to go in and change the shutter speed into a de-blur mode. I'll, I'll try to go back to that later. So now we're going to the second imager. We can, I can go to lens, turn WDR on and off. Save it, maybe that's the only thing I want to do. I don't know why I'm going back to camera one. There we go. Guess I want to make sure WDR was on this one. And then we're now looking at number four. Number four is, of course, to stitch together all that. See, I got the WDR on this one and not on this one. And then I could do the same thing. Hit menu or bring up preset 95. And I can turn motion on this thing, which is motion detection. And I'm going to show you a little demo of that. And then patrol mode. Okay, I'll show you that. And then this is where you can go and adjust the camera. It doesn't adjust for left and right. It adjusts up and down so you can get everything lined up a little better. Uh, on the camera. And of course, you can adjust the camera ID if you want there, give it a name if you want. But we'll go in here. We got patrol mode. And so this little window is going to move, be moving down here. This is all generated in the camera, by the way. And then it'll go from this side and then it will stop and then it will go to the other side. So, a really, uh, I, you know, I, I think useful extra feature in the camera takes up an extra uh, port on the recorder but i think just completely worthwhile so now i flipped motion on and uh, we'll leave this running for a second because i think i was waiting for something to come by here and i can change patrol mode to fast or slow i can now set the exposure to separate so each one is separate for the other one, or uh, you know, put them together, crank the patrol mode back on. We will give it one second to kind of there. You go. See that car? It saw the motion, and then it went that way and saw the motion. So it was on patrol mode, and then it'll wait. After the motion stops, it will then go back to patrol mode, or you could have that thing to where it's, it will just stay in the center, and if it sees motion, it'll just go to motion and go to motion. So now you have another way to, to alert it, okay? The camera, uh, camera also looks like this. So this is a, a quad view of that same camera, so you can sit there and watch in the quad view. You know, so again, a 16 channel unit, I can bring up a nine screen or a 16 screen. Usually, so it takes those four across the top. But the quad view is just on, on this camera is actually very useful. And you can use this to maybe detect motion, okay, this fourth window here, that you wouldn't be normally looking at. You know, you're like, oh, something happened over there. Go take a look at it. one and again this is the uh, night view of the same same camera and again I can go in and change it to color if I want I can turn on the starlight mode leave it leave that one in color and the other ones in black and white so you can do a you can manipulate and set it up however you want 
So in the web browser, it's got the same thing. We can go in, bring up our uh, menu for our camera, and go in and make our adjustment to the camera remotely. Again, just a, it, I, I, I find this camera super, super useful. Uh, gives you that big, wide 180 degree view without loss of video because it's not using like a fisheye lens or anything. There's the patrol mode, it's fast. I think it's too fast. And again, I think we're seeing a little lag and a little distortion because the uh, uh, GoToWebinar likes to crush uh, video you put into it. So uh, again, six megapixel, 180 degree view, true day night, does have WDR, dual voltage. Uh, we have junction boxes for it and all the different mounts and everything for it, corner mounts, all that stuff for it. So again, I, I just think it's a really, uh, really powerful and useful camera. Uh, can be used in other stuff. Of course, has our five-year warranty on it, which we uh, love to brag about because uh, I think some of the people on this phone knows we really stand by that one. And uh, someone has something they uh, have a problem, we take care of it for them. So this is our web page uh, for the camera. Every single product we have has a dedicated web page that explains what's going on with it. But also, I don't know if we go back go back to the top here. You can go in, we have support articles on it. We can show the manuals uh, of it. If there's any firmware or software needed for the device, we've got that. You know, and then we got this guy. So this is our Starlight Flex. This is an eight megapixel. So four imager camera. Uh, has the mounts of the lenses. Okay, as a magnet mount, so you can position them and move them around and tweak them anywhere you want. They're not in, you know, some kind of screw thing where you got to get it in the right spot. Uh, this is it on a, a pendant mount. Okay, but you can use this off a ceiling mount, uh, and we have a wall mount, so you can tweak them and kick it up uh, if you want to, like we have it on our uh, office there in Cerritos. And you can position these sensors in any way you want. So if you have it at the center of something, you can have it pointing down hallways. Uh, you could have three sensors kind of looking out and then one looking down. See if there's anyone trying to vandalize anything right below it or kicked out again a little bit. Uh, doubling up maybe on sensor two or between sensor, sensor three and four here to look at a little tighter view of the entranceway to this building. Um, so, so you can order combinations of lenses for these things. So you can in stock, usually we have what we call the 2222, which is four 2.8s on it, and the 4444s. So you can order those either from the distributor, some distributors have them in stock, uh, and they'll come to you from the distributor or they'll come directly from our office, just like you did you order a, a normal camera. But we also have a ton of other part numbers for this because you can order a custom configuration. These usually take 24 to 48 hours to actually ship because we've got to put the lenses on them and test them. But you can order any combination of two 2.8s, one four millimeter, one six millimeter, depending on your situation you're doing, or all four eight millimeter lenses, you're really looking at stuff pretty far off, or you want to have a tight view on a doorway, you know, or three or four doorways, you can do it that way. Two fours, two sixes, our, our actually most popular custom one is two 2.8s and two fours, okay, that people special order. but. Uh, you can order 2.8, so every image is a wide image. There'll be overlap on them. And fours, there's going to be overlap on those two if you put four of them sort of in the front of the camera, fanned out, uh, giving you a way over 180 degree view. And 2.8 will give you your, I mean, your like probably 270 degree view <laughs> with uh, three 2.8, uh, four 2.8. So keep that in mind. So setup on this camera is a little different. You can see that. Camera comes with, again, the little tools. Uh, by the time you're using digital watchdog cameras a lot, you're going to have a bunch of these little uh, tools hanging around. They're T10 or T20, depending on the model, with a little security uh, tip on it. Screws, mounting template, of course, the test video cable. And then when you look at the camera, you can do setup here. So let's say you're up on a ladder and you want to point the camera. You plug your test monitor in here and you throw the dip switch and you can go make your adjustments at the camera, okay? Looking at it, making your adjustments on it, and then 
So the dip switch again, go to camera two, dip switch again, camera three, and so on. Okay, so you can make your adjustments at the camera uh, using the menus. Or you can log in uh, remotely using the web browser or uh, your uh, A1 Plus and manage the camera the same way. And if you notice, again, you can turn starlight on the, on the key, on some imagers, not on others. So you can have some cameras in black and white, one camera in color looking at the same thing. So you could have that or have, you know, a 2.8 millimeter looking at a wide area, all right, in, in black and white mode with the IRs and then that same area, but tighter in on whatever you're looking at in starlight mode with like a four or six millimeter tightening in on the spot. So you can do a lot with these to, to get extra coverage, get the day night coverage, because each one, it's not going to be, you can tweak each one to where you want it. Okay, so, you know, the brightness, uh, you know, adjustment here is when you click lens, uh, you've got your shutter mode. So you can actually go in and manually set the shutter. Again, I'd leave it on auto, but you might be doing something where you need to capture fast moving something or other, and then you want to increase the shutter speed, uh, which of course though requires more light. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then you've got your focus adjust, focus adjust. Uh, you turn it on for uh, um, indoor or outdoor, because indoor, uh, indoor is usually artificial light, so it'll work better than uh, outdoor. And you'll find this on our uh, other, most of our other cameras also. So again, it's adjustment for indoor, outdoor. So just keep that in mind. And then of course we've got backlight compensation, which is a little box you can move around on each imager. And so let's say, so the sun is at this one annoying spot, the top of the lens, you know, for that camera. You can put your backlight compensation over where that sun is and then make the adjustment to it. So this way the sun won't overpower the imager uh, of the camera, making the image not usable. And then we can go in here and, uh, you know, turn on our defog, which we talked about, uh, wide dynamic range, and of course the DRC, which is dynamic range control, which I like a little better, especially indoors than wide dynamic range. I think it makes the picture look better. And it's not doing what wide dynamic range does. It's wide dynamic range is taking two exposures and putting them together. Uh, DRC is actually compensating for the brightest to the lowest spot, which I, I do like better. And then we do have motion detection in here, uh, which basically just does an alarm, uh, alarm pop-up. So it'll be text OSD on the display. And it will trigger the alarm out. So if you have motion, you can trigger the alarm out in the camera. I would say to you, if you're going to use this, don't use this for motion detector, get a motion detector. Okay, I mean, relatively speaking, in the analog world, they're pretty inexpensive and uh, they're more accurate than video motion detector. Video motion detector, we want it to record video. Now, you might want to have a text alarm up there that you know burns something in the video when there's some you know motion alert. So just want to you know keep that in mind. It does have it in there, but we're using the motion detection on the unit. So tilt, very important with these cameras is we lock the tilt at no more than 60 degrees, which is the reason why we have that other mount that'll kick the camera up and down. So if you want the lens tilted more, you tilt the whole body of the camera. And the reason for that is whatever the material we've used up there and tested, if you have it tilt up more, we got more light, light reflection to the dome and the image became less usable, okay? So if we made these things to tilt out to 90 degrees, we were having light reflection off the material at the top and the edge uh, of the camera. So that's why we keep the tilt at 60 and then you use that, that mount to kick the back of it uh, off. That makes any sense to you guys just in testing with these things. We found that that worked better than, you know, taking the lens and being able to tilt it up 75, 80, 90 degrees. So you can point them straight down, you can tilt them to 60. If you want them tilted more, then you can tilt the whole body of the, the camera with that one mount. Now we have RS-45, alarm ins and outs, stuff like that. Now we don't have to worry about the RS-45, okay? Because of course we can, we do up the coax, okay? This might be for some older uh, unit or some weird unit they might have. Um, and I got one question. So you have, Four video balance Gilbert, one Cat5 cable, and then you got to pull for this one 18.2. This is for imager. The other one you'd only have to pull three if you're not going to use that fourth one, but that fourth one's pretty usable. 
Uh, and of course, power. Now, this one and the other camera, the bullet camera, have four imagers in there. So they're gonna it pulls more power than a standard camera. A lot of standard cameras, especially the cheaper ones out there, pull you know, you know, with a 200 milliwatt watt, something like that. You know, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 amps, whatever. Each of these are gonna pull about an amp. Okay, so make sure that the power supply you have hooked up to put the amp, or they maybe have to have a dedicated you know power supply or power brick form because they are gonna draw uh, more power. Uh, we ran into uh, an experience with, and I can't remember the name of the product, but it sends everything over the coax, power and everything. And they used a bunch of these cameras, and they had a bunch of other cameras. And these were replacing cameras they had because they wanted to have more coverage. Uh, it was actually a mall. And uh, ah, veracity, veracity. But anyway, it sends the power and everything up the coax, and it's redistributed at the other end. And these, the cameras were kept dropping off. They'd lose one, they'd lose four, cameras would wink out. And when we finally, we had to actually go to the site, finally measured it, camera was barely getting three quarters of an amp. I'm sorry, barely getting a quarter of an amp. And so went in, we disconnected some of the other cameras, and as soon as we disconnected like eight cameras, all these cameras came up and powered up okay. So power is important for this type of camera, multi-imager cameras. And it's the same in the IP world, by the way. If you look look at our IP cameras that are multi-imager, we ship them with a uh, PoE injector. So same thing here. Get them a minimum of one, 1 1.5 amp off a good power supply. So talk a little bit more about Starlight Plus. This is our smaller uh, camera. All right, so it still has the test video output, but this one, smaller, less expensive. It does not have the uh, video Balin built into it, just to keep that in mind. Neither did the uh, the other bigger ones. All right, but this is a five megapixel Starlight Plus camera. So keep in mind that a five megapixel card, these cannot dumb themselves down enough for two megapixels. These will go from five to four, and then four to basically analog. Okay, so that's how they would work with all of them. So if you have an older A1, not an A1 Plus, you have to put them in analog mode and basically have them in 960 by 480 resolution, right? And if you have someone else's recorder, okay, these are five and four megapixel built in, and then they go down to analog for setup. So just keep that in mind. And so then we're going to go sort of the same scene. Program the camera, bring it up, and again we'll be at the unit here, showing you the programming at the recorder itself. And this is how it appears here. So it's just showing you the resolution. Now we have group record in here, so you can have motion on one camera, record or have an alarm uh, alarm input sensor input motion detector whatever. Cause two, three, four, five, six. You know, depending on how many cameras are hooked up to the system, have those record. You can have some cameras, of course, that are covert, so only the admin or certain users can see. Uh, and then we'll uh, get on to the, what adjustments you can make to the camera. So in all these cameras, okay, you can also make the adjustment here. Brightness, contrast, color, hue, and it goes out and actually makes the adjustment at the camera, okay? I like just go into that camera menu you know, preset 95 and go in and make the adjustments. Yeah, you can default to change it. I mean, you know, it's a black and white scene, so we'll see more when we get to the color menus. So again, go up here, enter in. And then we can go in and adjust for exposure, color, day, night. We can put it in starlight mode. And we can look, we've got our backlight compensation, and again, crank up our starlight. 
if you have enough light, you could crank the starlight. If I had starlight 320, it wouldn't make a difference. It's basing on the number of amount of light you have there. So that's why turning it on off the night, because it wasn't quite dark enough in this scene. I showed you kind of what the starlight can do on the other the other cameras. But this one, as you can see, the starlight is buried in the exposure. Now, in here, you've got your mirror flip and, of course, your sharpness control, your gamma. So, again, we go to higher, more black, you go lower, more white is brought into the scene. Actually, on some of the cameras, I think almost all of them have this digital zoom. I've never used it. But, again, you can go in and, uh, you know, orientate the camera right. Uh, the dynamic range control. And of course, the defog control is buried under the function button. So some of the menus have moved around just a little bit. So talk about one or two other things, of course, with the DW website. Uh, almost all of our systems, I mean, all, all of our products, you can go in here, click on the support on the main page. So you double click up here. Put support on the main page, and it'll bring you directly to our support page, and you can sit there and type in your question. C3, HD over coax, HD spot, you know, uh, you got Blackjack Mini, you know, whatever, and it'll bring up all the articles related to that Linux, bring up all the articles related to Linux. So you can go in and do a search, and we're adding stuff every day. We actually have a dedicated person now who is adding stuff. I'm not going to say every day, almost every day. I would say four times a week there are articles being added uh, on our website. From We'll get a tech call, something unusual. We'll say, hey, everyone, including the customer, has got to know it. Gets put in tech bulletin format, put on the website. So I, I think it's uh, becoming a really good tool. It's a good tool for me. I can't remember everything. I can't remember the Linux command. can't remember everything. And so it's good just to have the, this out here to go in and do, a, do a, remind myself, if anything. So, again, manufacturing compliant, I, I mentioned it before. So, in the U.S., there is a lot of federal money floating around to people in the form of PPP and in uh, forgivable loans, uh, other stuff that the money's given out because of the COVID-19 situation. Uh, uh, and so, you want to make sure that your products are NDAA and TAA compliant, which what it means is we've gone through our product line, and if you bring up this, it would be all our products that are compliant. Uh, very little of our stuff was ever made in China anyway. We made the transition a couple years ago to not have anything made in China anyway. Uh, so North Korea, I'm sorry, South Korea, or South Korea, Vietnam or Taiwan, okay? And we've gone through and made sure the components in 99% of our stuff are also not on parts, you know, parts from these companies that are on the, the, the you know, the band list. The band list. So, just keep that in mind. Uh, we're uh, eligible for GSA, uh, government contracting, government jobs, without a problem. All right, so a couple of things I want to show you here, because some people don't really look at our site sometimes, but sometimes you want to type in coming soon or new, because I get surprised by things when I see some stuff, to be honest with you. So we're releasing a uh, two megapixel um, PTZ camera, 20X PTZ, a whole bunch of 4K uh, UHD cameras, so you're going to have to go from 5 megapixel to 4K, okay? Which means we'll have a 4K recorder when we release these. And then, of course, our MyDW cloud management system, which will give you guys as dealers the ability to monitor your employees, I'm sorry, your, your customer's site, okay? And get alerts and information from them to allow you to be more reactive and give better customer service, okay? So you get in over the Internet. You won't get video unless you want it. But it will tell you if the hard drive is getting too hot, bad sector, you know, you need to do some camera went out, and you'll be dealing with dashboards on it. It will be available also uh, via mobile device. So, again, really powerful stuff we have coming out. We've gotten requests for 4K over coax, and uh, we're going to deliver with a complete line, including our uh, ball cameras. And we're going to do uh, webinars uh, on these pretty extensively, and including the PTZ camera. So. Uh, Keep that in mind in the future. Of course, we have more uh, webinars coming up. We have our really popular Works With series. We'll go backwards a little bit. And we've got ICT on Tuesday, June 23rd. 
and Thursday, June 25th, Centurion Solutions. Okay, so this is access control, intrusion detection, and this is more AI that works with Spectrum. So you guys can go back and look at all of our offerings of, of uh, recorded webinars, and we have a ton of information on video intelligence. A lot of these video intelligence are really focusing on, of course, the social distancing stuff. So you might be able to take out and, and pair out social distancing as a, you know, as a functionality and then pair it with your, uh, you know, whatever other stuff you're doing for the customer and give you an edge in, uh, you, know, you know, getting business, but also a technical edge on how it works. And one that I've uh, been working on pretty hard, which is this one here, which is uh, the HD over coax, uh, compressor. This is on June 26th. This is next Friday, uh, June 26th. That's so going to be the compressor uh, in Spectrum. Okay, so it's the our, our encoder, bringing cameras into the encoder uh, in Spectrum, and then we have. Uh, let's see if I can find it here on the bottom here. This one here is going to be uh, Spectrum. It's a little bit obscured. I apologize. Uh, Spectrum and Linux. So all of our Linux-based stuff, Linux commands. Uh, how to navigate the, uh, the the desktop in there? How to do the same functions you have in Windows? You know how to find them in Linux, or how to do this a few things at the command line that will actually be faster than what you can do in, in Windows. So uh, I'm open for 